Hello, my name is Joan Buckley. I'm the director of the UCC Executive MBA and I'm here today with Jim Clarkin, who is the chief executive of Oxfam Ireland and who is tonight to receive an alumni award from UCC for his exceptional achievements. Hi, Jim. Hi. You mm -hmm. might like to tell us a little bit about yourself. First. Sure. Uh, I grew up in County Limerick and uh, went to school in the city, uh, did an undergraduate in Galway and then lived in Clonakilty and worked in Clonakilty for a number of years. And uh, having worked in business development, um, I decided that it would be important to continue my studies and to look at something substantial that could help to kind of push me into the next stage of my career. And the MBA was an obvious choice for me and okay. UCC was very definitely the obvious choice for that. OK, when you decided to come to UCC, what was your outstanding memory of the MBA? Uh, it was tough, okay. <laughs> uh, but but thoroughly enjoyable and thoroughly challenging. Um, the, the caliber and quality of the, the lectures, of the material, of the guest speakers and indeed of the classmates was was extraordinary and was really pushed us all to to achieve and pushed us all on. We pushed each other on and okay. it, it was it was something that was really impactful. I have to say it was probably the most pivotal thing that I did in my career at, the, at certainly at that time to, to move me into another space. Um, and yeah. so it was a very enjoyable experience and I've I've kept close enough links with the college since and with my peers and with my my fellow graduates and uh, you know we it, it, we formed a very useful uh, I suppose space where we can meet and talk about issues okay. that, that are common to us without competition if you like okay. but it's it's a great it's great to have been to UCC and it's it's great to still be feel feel connected yes, to it. You're still very involved with UCC in a variety of ways. Yeah, I was lucky enough to be asked to be on the, the board of the MBA following graduation. I had been a class rep and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, I've, I've spoken at the at the development college here as well and and would continue to do so. And uh, I'm very feel very proud to be part of it. You decided to leave the private sector having done an MBA, which is an unusual choice. What motivated you to do that? It was something I'd always wanted to do since I was as far back as I can remember as a child. Even I, I thought I wanted to go and do something to fix the world uh, in the naive kind of way that you think about these things. And having done the MBA, I, I moved on from Clonakilty, got a really uh, good job in Waterford as a commercial director of a, a large company there. And I kind of reached a certain stage in life, I suppose, where I thought that if I don't do this now, I'll never do it. And the opportunity was was an opportunity arose to work as a volunteer in a in a remote part of rural South Sudan running a large health, water and sanitation program. Uh, it was quite a leap, but I, I think mm -hmm. the timing was right for me. It was the, the right time in life. Had I not done it then, I would probably just have continued doing what I was doing or moved on in, in, the, in the career that I had kind of progressed thus far. But I, I kind of knew that I was at a, at a, a time in life where it was either then or, or not at all. So I, I took the leap and, uh, and kind of never looked back. I suppose it was an extraordinarily challenging experience. It's, it's a very, very difficult place to live in a difficult place to be in. It was a war zone, um, the the poorest, least developed place probably in, on, on planet Earth. Um, but extraordinary in terms of the way people themselves are doing everything they can for their communities. And to, to kind of get a real sense of that. And, and that really is what development is about. It's about local people, you know, taking on their own development okay. and working for their own communities with the support that those of us who are in this part of the world can give. And uh, certainly that was what I experienced in South Sudan. And having come back from that, I, I, I just found it very difficult to work in back into the private sector. There were options there for me and it was tempting, but I just there was nothing that jumped out at me. And then I realized, look, really, this is where I want to go is, is to work in this area. So then um, on returning home, various options kind of arose. And I, I worked in, in Eastern Europe for a while on child rights issues. But this opportunity with Oxfam came along and it was uh, just a, a really, a really good uh, potential for, for myself and I was lucky enough to be selected and the role in Oxfam then is is to be the chief executive of this organisation in Ireland one of Ireland's oldest NGOs the largest NGO but and it's an independent organisation so uh, Oxfam Ireland is a peer organisation with other Oxfams around the world and we work together under this umbrella of the confederation and I'm an executive director of that confederation so collectively we work in 94 countries um, the the development end of the work is is often the part that you don't see. So people traditionally associate our work with emergency response, with the likes of the Philippines crisis, which is happening at the moment, or Syria, or Haiti, or other areas like that, which we do important work in those areas and at that time. 
but a lot of the work is on long term development, working with communities year in, year out, working particularly with women on women's rights, working on land issues, working with food, all those types of areas that help people to to move out of poverty. And then the, the key component of our work is campaigning and advocacy. So okay. we work not just um, in developing countries, but we work in this part of the world, in the wealthier part of the world, putting pressure on governments, on business and on other uh, key facilitators to change the way they operate in order to to help support developing countries in their own development because there are so many obstacles that developing countries have which are artificial and have been created by the wealthier part of the world and we need to target those because ultimately that is how real change will happen. Okay could you describe an average week in your working Hmm. life? I don't know I don't know what an average week looks like (laughs) it's it's so varied it could it could mean so many different things so here in Ireland, we have over a thousand staff and volunteers. So I suppose managing quite a large operation like that, it's it requires the same a lot of the same types of things that running any large business might mm-hmm. might do, uh, dealing with staff, dealing with management, dealing with uh, strategic issues, um, working with the media. I do quite a lot of work at Oireachtas um, and in Northern Ireland and Stormont as well uh, with the political powers that be and trying to influence there. Um, obviously, quite a lot of travel uh, to international fora and into into the field working with communities on the ground and spending time with them and understanding you know our their their role and our role within the development sphere so it's a kind of a it can be very varied any one week could be quite different to another Thanks. but uh, i suppose it keeps it very exciting and very interesting and there's never no two weeks look the same but it's 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 certainly never dull okay what did your mba bring to that or what do you think i think the mba was was so important in terms of developing strategic skills uh, I, I'd had pretty good business background and experience before I did the MBA, which I think was important to come into the MBA with something like that. But it was really about honing those types of strategic skills, and which I have found have been so useful in terms of um, restructuring and redeveloping the organisation here in Ireland. And I have been asked as an executive director of the global organisation to lead major change processes across the world. I suppose I'd be kind of unique in my peers and that very few people, a lot of people, peers of mine and other Oxfams, if you like, would have come from development, pure development, and that's what they would have done, brilliant people, but they wouldn't have had the business background necessarily or that that kind of strategic training that I was lucky to have from from UCC. Mm -hmm. So I've been put into those kind of spaces to help lead that. And we've successfully rolled out a, a major change process throughout the world Another one starting now, so there's there's going to be much more of this, and it's a constant change process. But I guess because I've had the skills that I that I gained from from my time here, um, it's been very useful in in helping the global organisation to to move on. Yeah. Okay. What does the alumni award mean to you? I'm I'm delighted. I have to say, I'm I'm surprised and delighted in equal measure, and it's it's a it's a very nice recognition of what I've been trying to do. But I suppose more so about about the organization about the people who work in development i suppose it it says that that there's a professionalism in our sector mm. and that is being recognized you know by a professional award if you like from a professional college in ucc um i would like to dedicate it more so though to the to the people that actually do the work primarily in developing countries people who every day do things for their own community for their own families, for their own country, that help to to move things on and help to to make sure that development happens, and uh, you know it's it's just it's a, it's a it's a recognition for for all of that work that so many people carry out. Also for volunteers, I mean, we have over a thousand volunteers here in Ireland, here in Cork. People volunteer every week, doing quite unglamorous jobs mm-hmm. for free for us, so that that can support our work overseas. So there are so many people that are connected, and ordinary people in the community who support our, us in so many ways, who campaign for us, who donate to us, who uh, support in, in lots of other ways. And, and that's it's a recognition for them too. OK. You've maintained a, lo- a strong connection with UCC through the MBA board and the, the uh, Centre for Global Development. How do you manage that with all the other commitments? Well, I, I suppose it's a matter of prior- prioritisation. I mean, th- these are things that I think are important. They're important to me personally. But they're also important. It's important to know where you've come from and to be able to to stay connected and hopefully to help influence 
the college or in, influence you know graduates or people who are training now through the college who are who are experiencing their learning and maybe to to offer some useful advice i mean they're very smart people around the place okay. and if i can help in some way to to influence them in a positive way or, or that they can be a i can be a sounding board on things i'm very happy to do that and that's probably as much as as i can do but it is it's it's a it's a great honor to be asked to 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 come and speak in your own alma mater yeah. okay can i ask you who inspires you um uh, i suppose you, you could look at global figures and there there are many of them out through the years and you could name very obvious characters and the likes of Nelson Mandela and Gandhi and people like that. But in actual fact, for me, it tends to be women, particularly uh, in developing countries who have the ambition, who have the, the courage to challenge the status quo, to challenge the way things have been for them, to try and ensure that it won't be the same for their daughters and their sons and dedicate their lives to doing this. And there are there are millions of people around the world just like that, that you'll never hear of, that will never make it into magazines or newspapers or have an opportunity like this. But they, they are the ones who make the change happen. And I've met so many of them over the years and I, I never cease to be inspired and amazed and, and so impressed and humbled to be in their company and to somehow try to represent them uh, in, in, in what we do. Okay. When when you receive this award tonight, not alone will you be um, recognised, but you'll be joining a, a number of okay, uh, other um, previous alumni, but as part of a wider network of over 100,000 people. What does that network mean to you? It's extraordinary to, to, to realise that, that that's what the, the, the UCC alumni looks like. I mean, that as a body, if you could, a, a body of very smart people who are out doing very professional things in so many influential ways around the world, it's it's a great resource for the college, but it's a great resource for those of us who feel part of it to say, well, look, I'm linked somehow to these other great graduates who've done amazing things. And that, you know, that if that helps to open doors or to influence mm -hmm. in other ways, it's, it's, an, it's a great thing to have. It's a great asset for the college. It's a great asset for those of us who can wear that badge and say, I'm one of them. I, I think it, we're very lucky. Yeah. OK. Um, currently, the UCC brand is centred around a tradition of independent thinking. What does that mean for you? Well, it's interesting because um, that that goes right to the heart of Oxfam's work. We the we talk about the power of people against poverty. We we talk about um, speaking truth to power, and independent thinking is that's what that is all about. It's all about not accepting the status quo, not saying that this is it's okay to do things the way they've always been done because that's just the norm. I mean, if you can encourage young people and others to be independent, to challenge the things that we've accepted, uh, to make those kind of changes happen. That's how development happens. That's how humanity develops. That's how it has always been. It's always been the people who have challenged the status quo that have made change happen, whether that be in science or whether that be in medicine or in business or in philanthropy or in, in development. That's how real change happens. So it's, it's a great uh, slogan. It's a great uh, philosophy that the college has, and it's something that we fully embrace. So. Uh, it, feel, it feels like a very natural fit for me. OK. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Perfect.